Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Living Room Edition of Baseball Night in New York, brought to you by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers, Doug Williams, alongside Anthony Recker, and the birds are chirping. Todd Zeal is back with us. He's got the water shimmering behind him. I've got a new professorial bookshelf behind me, so we're all... You're looking you know, good, Doug. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, guys, uh, today we want to talk about Jeff McNeil. Um, this is a, a player who is just so dominant at the plate in, in a couple different ways he showed us in 2019, the two di- types of hitter he, he can be. Um, he can be the contact guy, the high average guy, and he can keep that high slugging percentage, transfer it over to hitting for, for more power. So, um, Todd, I, I just broad scope here with Jeff McNeil. In your opinion, how high of a ceiling does he have as a hitter and as a ball player? Uh, wow. Um, his ceiling is high. I think he's playing at a very high level, though. I have to say uh, between 2018 and 2019, um, to see him continually be able to be among the lead leaders in average and then turn it around in the second half, especially when, hitter, uh, when pitchers tried to crowd him and pound him in, uh, he started turning on the ball more, showing more pop and, um, you know, keeping a lot of his numbers the same, but he drove in more runs, hit with more power the second half of the season. And if you ask Jeff McNeil, he thinks he's both. Anthony, same question to you. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I can't really say what this guy's ceiling is. I mean, he's he's done a tremendous job just in his first two years getting to play against him in 2018, um, a little bit in AAA when I did. Uh, you know, you could see him from the first time I played against him. You know, we kind of had a way we wanted to attack him um, and were able to be – we were a little bit successful getting him out because we were expanding the zone on him a lot and he was a very aggressive hitter. Well, as the season went on, him and Pete Alonso both made tremendous adjustments and his was – um, you know, not necessarily being not a free swinger. He was still a free swinger, but he just made better uh, decisions as to which pitches he was going to go after and be more aggressive at. So, I mean, this guy's got tremendous offensive potential. Um, he's able to make adjustments on the fly. Uh, you know, we've seen it at the big league level and what he did last year in two different halves. Um, you know, I think the best version of him is, you know, a little bit of both. You know, everybody at home knows this is a very uh, technologically savvy program. So let's um, let's feature our producer, Dave Mandel, with our technologically savvy uh, full screen. Jeff McNeil's 2019 split. So both of you guys have mentioned the kind of the adjustments that he made. And Anthony just said he's he's a little bit of both. So pre-All-Star break, I mean, he was hitting 349. The power wasn't there, but I don't know about people at home. I, I wasn't complaining. <laughs> like, it was so refreshing to see a hitter like that basically spray the baseball anywhere and and hit the ball where it was pitched. Now, Todd, you mentioned a lot of the numbers staying the same. Look at the OPS. Uh, The slugging was high throughout. Um, So did you see him make a conscious adjustment? Like, do you think Jeff McNeil thinks he improved? Or does he look at the average column and say, okay, yeah, I'd like the batting average to be higher, and I'd like the home runs in the first half to be higher? I think the interesting part about that, Full screen. Thank you, Dave. That's a brilliant job. Um, is the OPS. I mean, the OPS is virtually identical from uh, both halves of the season. RBIs are around the same. Power, obviously, very much higher in the second half. But the interesting thing about watching Jeff throughout the entirety of last season is that he was much more frustrated as a hitter in the second half of the season. Yeah. Because he slamming. expects to get base hits every time he walks to the plate. But at the same time, I think 14 of his home runs were still hit on first pitch. That means that he, when he knew the pitchers were starting to try to crowd him and he was going to go up there and be aggressive early in the count, if he got a pitch over the plate and it didn't matter if it was a fastball or a changeup or a slider, the guy was uncanny, has an uncanny ability of squaring up that first pitch. So, Anthony, you're behind the plate yeah. uh, in 2019. Um, who is harder to game plan for? Uh, 2019 first half McNeil or second half? Oh, man. Um, you know, as a, as a pitch caller, I always hated the guys who came up there and could fight off pitches and put anything in play and, you know, were just real pests at the Great. plate. And to me, that lends itself more to the first half Jeff McNeil, a guy who is just putting things in play and has that high average and, you know, is able to just square things up and isn't trying to do too much with anything. The one thing I will say, and Todd mentioned it a couple times about him pulling the ball a little bit more, especially later in the, in, in the season, um, you know, because guys were trying to come in on him. That's exactly what makes Jeff McNeil so incredibly tough to, to game plan against. 
he can take things that, that the pitchers are trying to do, that the other team's trying to do, and make them strengths. He, he did pull the ball a lot more last year than he did in 18. Um, and that's probably because he had a lot more pitches in coming in on him, and he made the adjustment. He said, you know what, if you're going to keep coming in on me, I'm just going to get the head out and pull it. Do you think, Anthony, that the launch angle stuff, wanting to improve the fly ball rate, that kind of thing, is that something that uh, – is that a pressure that's placed on the modern-day hitter? Well, what's actually interesting is his fly ball rate technically went down from 2018 to 19. His line drive rate went, way, went, went up, and his ground ball percentage actually went up a little bit. So he was actually putting more balls in, you know, on a lower trajectory, which is a good thing, I think, for a guy like Jeff. I mean, he's gonna hit, he can hit home runs, and he's going to hit home runs. In the second half, it wasn't on that beautiful illustration we had from Dave – but he actually had his doubles went down, and um, even though his home runs went up, but his extra base hits were the same, first half and second half. He had the exact same amount, um, you know, far less games in the second half. So, obviously, he was still driving the ball a little bit more, more RBIs and all that stuff. Um, you know, but this is a guy who can do it all. Jeff McNeil must be the most frustrating guy to those analytics guys that they've ever seen because this is a guy that if you shift against him, he'll hit it, he'll hit it into the shift and, and get a base hit the other way. If you don't shift on him, he'll pull the ball through the hole uh, on the right field side of the thing. And every pitcher in all of baseball knows that he's going to go after the first pitch. And what do they do? They still throw him something in the first pitch that he can hit. This guy is got one of those ways that just can frustrate you. And it was just my, my thoughts when thinking about Anthony trying to game plan for a guy um, like that. Guys, it's a fascinating discussion about Jeff McNeil. And um, time now for the walk-off. Let's talk uh, conversations behind the plate. And, Todd, we'll begin with you. Um, most fascinating conversation you had as a catcher with either an umpire or a batter at the plate. Legendary umpire Bruce Fremming. I was in my rookie season. We were playing against the Cubs at home in, uh, in St. Louis. And with two strikes on a, on a batter, um, our pitcher threw a ball that was right on the corner. I held it and froze it there for a second. The batter, Dwight Smith, put his helmet down and started to walk out to the field, and Bruce called it a ball, and he put his helmet back on, and then he called the next pitch a ball, and as he was walking to first base, Bruce Fremming came around the front of the plate as if he was going to dust off home plate, and he looked at me and he said, kid, I've been in this league longer than you've been alive. You ever freeze a ball like that again on me, and it's going to be a long season for you in this league. And uh, then came back around to the other side. And so I, I the, the great part was next guy we got out, I'm leading off, of course. And Rick Sutcliffe, a veteran pitcher, is on the mound for the Cubs. So I come up, first pitch about that far outside, strike one. That far outside, strike two. Third ball was actually literally in the dirt. Joe Girardi can confirm it. He picks it, and he, he was calling like Leslie Nielsen – in, uh, in, you know, uh, the, the, the movie. And he was calling it before the pitch was set. And I just turned around and walked off, didn't say anything. Whitey got thrown out of the game. I come back the next inning, go to catch. He goes to dust off the plate again. And he goes, all right, kid, now let's go play ball. And he was good to me the rest of my career. So he just wanted to make a point that particular time. How about umpires drop the rituals, drop this showmanship, and just call balls and strikes, please. Uh, that's just my take. I didn't play the game. Anthony? I think nowadays they kind of have to. Um, for me, I mean, my, my story is a little bit different, uh, you know, just because it, go back to my rookie year, actually my first game, um, it, my first batter that stepped up to the plate, I was in Yankee Stadium as an Oakland A, and uh, Derek Jeter steps up to the plate, um, you know, number two, and, you know, you hear the whole thing. And, and uh, you know, he, he kind of – he went to step in the box, and then I knew some of the guys on the other team – that played with Oakland, whether it was Eric Chavez, Nick Swisher, a couple of the other guys that were on that roster. Um, and I guess the, you know, word had gotten around that it was my first game. And he kind of went to step in and step back out and, and said, hey, kid, I, uh, this is your, uh, your first game, huh? This is, your, <laughs> this is a good place to make a, make a debut. And I was just, I mean, absolutely starstruck. I actually have, we talked about the memorabilia thing yesterday, and I forgot about this. Maybe it was two days ago. Um, and I have a picture of that just little exchange between me and him um, one cool. of the picture, one of the photographers got it, uh, you know, of him kind of making a comment to me, looking down at me, and me looking up at him and smiling, and uh, it was just something I'll never forget. Oh wait, here, look at this. My wife just brought it to me as we were talking. Look at that. There it is. Well, those are those are some great stories. Your uh, your experiences are are awesome for our our fans and and viewers to to see in here. So we appreciate it. Todd Zeal, Anthony Recker, gentlemen, thank you. Everybody, we'll uh, we'll see you tomorrow.